சரி ஓகே சி இன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் இன்ஜுரி தெர் ஆர் சர்டைன் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் இன்ஜுரிஸ் விச் அக்கர்ஸ் இன் சர்டைன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் பர்சன்ஸ் டூயிங் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஓகே ஃபைன் ஸோ யூஸ்வலி பவுலர்ஸ் javelin throwers that is those who do overhead activities supraspinatus tendon supraspinatus tendon injury is most common supraspinatus tendon injury is most common those who play tennis tennis elbow is most common tennis elbow is common in them tennis elbow is inflammation inflammation of common extensor origin of forearm common extensor origin of forearm okay <coughs> see uh, in forearm uh, you got two groups of muscles one muscle over the flexor aspect called as flexor or group of muscles and it's called the extensor uh, group of muscles most of the flexor group of muscles arises from one common bony origin called as medial epicondyle there is a bone here called as medial epicondyle so most of the flexor muscles arises from this region in a very similar way there is lateral epicondyle and most of the muscles on the extensor aspect arises from the lateral epicondyle region so inflammation of the muscles which arises from this region on the lateral epicondyle region is called as tennis elbow because in tennis they play like this back and shot they will do so so inflammation of this part is called as tennis elbow in golfers inflammation on the medial side happens that is called as golfers elbow so golfers elbow is golfers elbow is inflammation of common flexor origin common flexor origin okay so now you diagnose tennis elbow by a test called as cousins test there is a test clinical test called as cousins test to diagnose tennis elbow okay diagnosis of tennis elbow is by a test called as cousins test next is see in uh, uh, those who do uh, uh, rowing of boat rowing of boat intercostal muscle injuries are common intercostal muscle injuries are common intercostal muscle injuries are common okay and uh, those who do skying okay skier's thumb is common so what is this called a skier's thumb whenever uh, you see this uh, bone that is the metacarpal bones okay these are the metacarpal bones four metacarpal bones on the outer and the thumb is here and uh, you get the proximal phalanx of the thumb and the distal phalanx of the thumb okay so this joint is called as first metacarpo phalangeal joint what is the joint called as this is called as first metacarpo phalangeal joint and this first metacarpo phalangeal joint has got two ligaments one on the ulnar side and another on the radial side called as ulnar collateral ligament and the radial collateral ligament so this is called as ulnar collateral ligament and this is called as radial collateral ligament and there is one muscle which is getting attached at this junction also which arises from the third metacarpal and from the base of the carpals to here this muscle is called as uh, adductor pollicis muscle what is this muscle called as adductor pollicis muscle adductor pollicis muscle adductor pollicis muscle now the rupture of ulnar collateral ligament the rupture of ulnar collateral ligament is called as skier's thumb rupture of ulnar collateral ligament is called as skier's thumb 
Now, when this ligament ruptures, what is the muscle which is here? Seen adductor pollicis. This adductor pollicis will prevent the healing of the ligament or it get interposed there. So, such interposition produced by adductor pollicis is called a Steiner's lesion. It's called a Steiner's lesion. These two terms are important here. What is called a Schiastum? Rupture of ulnar collateral ligament of first metacarpophalangeal joint is called a Schiastum. When the ligament gets ruptured, the adductor pollicis muscle gets interposed there, interposed between the bone and the ligament, and it prevents the ligament to heal. So such a lesion is called a Steiner's lesion. Such a lesion is called a Steiner's lesion. Okay, so these are certain sports injuries which we saw. Now, most important, most common sports injury we see is all around the knee joint. Okay, so we'll see about the uh, anatomy of knee joint and slowly we'll move into the injuries around the knee joint. So, knee is a complex joint. It is also in compound joint. It is also in compound joint. Okay, it is a condylar joint. It is a condylar joint. It is a Condylar joint. It is a biaxial joint. It is a biaxial joint. So all these are basic anatomy about uh, knee joint. I am not going into the details of it. I am just drawing the diagram of knee joint now. So this is the distal femur, and this is the proximal tibia, and this is the fibula here, and there is a bone here called a spatella. Okay. Knee joint is formed by femur, tibia, and patella. Fibula does not have any role in knee joint. You should be very clear in this. Fibula is not a part of knee joint. Fibula is a separate bone. It does not come into the knee joint. So knee joint is formed by femur, tibia, and patella. These are the three bones which forms the knee joint. Okay. Now there are a lot of ligaments around the knee joint. One ligament on the medial side is called the medial collateral ligament. This is called as medial collateral ligament. The other ligament on the lateral side, okay. The other ligament on the lateral side is called as the lateral collateral ligament. It's called as the lateral collateral ligament. Now within the joint, there is a semicircular disc-shaped structure called as the meniscus. What is this? Meniscus. Okay, you should. See the diagram and see what I am drawing here. Very important point. If you see this meniscus, what is this meniscus called as? This is medial meniscus. This is medial meniscus. And what is this meniscus called as? Lateral meniscus. What is the difference between two meniscus which you see in this diagram? Is there anything you saw in this or anything you are seeing in this diagram? What is the difference between medial meniscus and lateral meniscus here? Medial meniscus is attached to one ligament. What ligament is attached to? Collateral. Medial collateral ligament. Whereas lateral meniscus is not attached to lateral collateral ligament. Which means medial meniscus is less mobile. Lateral meniscus is more mobile. Because it is free, it is not attached to anything. It is more mobile. Whereas medial meniscus is more stiff. It is not moving here and there. So medial meniscal injury are more common. Medial meniscal injuries are more common. When you compare medial meniscus and lateral meniscus, which meniscus is getting more injured? It is the medial meniscus. Why medial meniscus is getting more injured? Because it is attached to medial collateral ligament. It is not able to move here and there. It is stiff inside. So repeated movements can cause rupture of medial meniscus. So medial meniscal injury are common compared to the lateral meniscal injury. Okay. So this is one view of uh, knee joint. We'll see the lateral view of knee joint. So this is the femur bone. And this is the tibia. And there is a ligament which runs from the anterior aspect of the tibia to the medial condyle of the femur. This ligament is called as anterior cruciate ligament, ACL. This is called as anterior cruciate ligament. Similarly, one more ligament is running from the posterior aspect of the tibia <coughs> to the femur. This is called a PCL. This is called a PCL. This is called a posterior cruciate ligament. This is called a 
posterior cruciate ligament so you got two ligaments one running from the anterior part of the tibia to the medial condyle of the femur that is called as anterior cruciate ligament the other from the uh, posterior aspect of the tibia to the femur that is called as posterior cruciate ligament now, what are their function main function acl prevents prevents anterior displacement of tibia prevents anterior displacement of tibia pcl prevents posterior displacement of tibia prevents posterior displacement of tibia so pcl prevents posterior displacement of tibia and also acl restricts or resist internal rotation internal rotation whereas pcl resist external rotation external rotation but it's external rotation okay so these are important points and uh, just imagine this is your knee joint now this is the uh, tibia and this is the femur okay so this is the front part or anterior part and this is the posterior part so this tibia has to stay here if it is not coming anteriorly what is the ligament which is preventing anterior displacement is the acl anterior cruciate ligament if it is not going posteriorly what is the ligament that is preventing this posterior okay fine now when you are walking upstairs in a hill na maramara we nadakkari seriya so knee to mal on your entire body weight is clear it tends to fall backwards and the tibia tends to fall anterior then as if it can move like this so now when it moves like this what is the ligament that is preventing or uh, avoiding the rupture there acl so in an uphill when you walk uphill the ligament which helps in walking uphill is acl when you walk down in the ligament which helps in walking is pcl okay uphill walking in mala mala erum bodu ACL will help you. So uphill walking, uphill walking, ACL helps, and downhill walking, PCL helps you. Okay. Now what happens when these ligaments gets ruptured? Because these ligament injuries are more common in uh, in uh, in football players. in hockey players so in usually those who use more of running and the jogging these ligament injuries are more common so we'll see one by one first we'll start with the meniscal injury meniscal injury meniscal injury as we already saw medial meniscus is more commonly injured the most common injured when compared to the lateral meniscus now when medial meniscus is torn you should know the anatomy of medial meniscus again so medial meniscus we see medial meniscus or what are the lateral or medial it has got three zones in it it has got three zones in it the outer zone is called as the red zone the inner zone is called as the inner zone this one is called as the white zone and in between it is the gray zone is the gray zone so medial meniscus or lateral meniscus both of them have got three zones in them the outer zone is called as the red zone this is called as a white zone and this is a gray zone it is intermediate zone it receives little bit of blood supply red because it is more vascular it receives blood supply white zone a vascular it does not receives blood supply okay so nutrition for the meniscus here comes from blood nutrition for the meniscus from here comes from the synovial fluid from the synovial fluid within the knee joint you got synovial fluid so that gives nutrition now if a tear happens okay if if a if a tear happens in the red zone you can repair this it will heal repair in this junction can heal the meniscus well because it is vascular whenever there is vascularity If you repair that area, it will heal well. In the face, lala suture, what are you doing? Face scalp. Have you sutured anything? 
face scalp la and abroad la they are not allowing you see if you if you see follow the patient if you suture them in the face or scalp region it will heal very well faster heal out because face and scalp has got high vascularity so in a very similar way wherever there is good vascularity healing will be better so gray red zone la oru tear irukku appadina if you suture that the healing will be better but in white zone if a, if a tear happens it won't heal so you have to remove the torn part you have to remove the torn part you can't repair it you have to remove it okay clear so meniscus has got three zones red zone gray zone and white zone if a tear happens in the red zone you can repair it it will heal if it happens on the uh, white zone it won't heal so you have to remove it now whenever a tear happens the patient can present with pain knee swelling and difficulty in squatting also difficulty in squatting difficulty in squatting so these are the complaints with which a patient can present with and how can you treat this by repairing or removing you will do through a method called as arthroscopy arthroscopy is you put a small camera into the joint and you see the structures and you repair it so that procedure is called as arthroscopy what is called as arthroplasty arthroplasty na it is replacement of the joint if the replacement of the joint is called as arthroplasty in arthroscopy you put a small scope inside the joint and you repair that structures so that is called as arthroscopy are you clear in this fine so meniscal uh, treatment is usually done using arthroscopy now coming to the acl sorry one, one more point regarding medial meniscus see how do you diagnose medial meniscus injury clinical test to diagnose medial meniscal injuries clinical test so these are the following tests which can be done to diagnose medial meniscus it's called as mcmurray's test mcmurray's test aplase grinding test all these are clinical test to diagnose medial meniscus or lateral meniscus injury then there is a test called as thesalis test okay so these tests can be done to diagnose medial meniscus injury okay now coming to the acl injury acl injury as we already saw about acl acl prevents anterior translation of tibia so whenever this ruptures the tibia moves more anteriorly there will be difficulty in walking upstairs now uh, how you diagnose acl injury by certain test clinical test what are the clinical test to diagnose uh, acl injury is called as anterior drawer test anterior drawer test okay there is a test called as pivot shift test pivot shift test and there is a test called as latchman's test latchman's test just know the name of this because they ask you these questions in your exams what are the test uh, used to diagnose uh, acl rupture or injury so anterior drawer test pivot shift test and latchman test okay so these are the tests which are used to diagnose acl uh, clinically and uh, by radiologically by doing an mri you can diagnose acl tear acl tear can be easily picked up by an mri okay and if you want to treat the acl again you have to treat it arthroscopically you can treat it arthroscopically and you reconstruct the torn ligament using graft you reconstruct the torn ligament using graft what are the what are the structures that can be used as graft you can use hamstring muscles you know hamstring muscles can anyone tell me the names of the hamstring muscles <coughs> where hamstring muscles are seen the posterior aspect of thigh okay what are the muscles what are the hamstring muscles four long it up biceps femoris short it up biceps femoris semi membranosus and semi tendinosus so these are the muscles so from these muscles graft can be taken to reconstruct the acl or you can use sartorius or you can use gracilius or you can use patellar tendon 
or you can use patella tendon okay so using these uh, structures you can reconstruct the acl okay so these are the grafts which are frequently used in acl reconstruction okay clear so next is uh, pcl so how do you diagnose pcl uh, injury you diagnose pcl injury by using a test called as posterior dryer test posterior dryer test so you do a test called as posterior dryer test and again if the pcl is injured you again you repair it arthroscopically arthroscopy by means of using arthroscopy you repair it using the same kind of graft like acl you can take graft from the hamstring arteries gratilius to repair the pcl injury okay so this is about the ligament injuries around the knee and last one two ligaments here note what is mcl and lcl of this mcl medial collateral ligament is most commonly injured of this two medial collateral ligament okay how you diagnose medial collateral ligament by giving a stress on the lateral side which is called as valgus stress test this is called as valgus stress test if you see this picture you can easily get what is called as a valgus stress test okay see in valgus stress test uh, the patient is lying supine and you given outward force at the leg region if there is an injury on this side if there is an injury on this side this is medial collateral ligament so the stress will open up the knee joint more when you go when you when you give stress from the lateral side so valgus stress test is used to diagnose medial collateral ligament injury okay opposite is varus stress test varus stress test is used to diagnose lateral collateral ligament injury okay clear and uh, this is how they do anterior dryer test okay they uh, sit over the foot of the patient they pull the leg anteriorly if the leg or uh, the tibia moves more than 5 mm anteriorly then it indicates anterior uh, dryer test positive which indicates acl tear is there okay clear so this is how they do anterior uh, dryer test so these are the various uh, 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 sports injury which we commonly encounter and the last is uh, this is varus stress test ankle sprain which is also a most commonly encountered uh, uh, structures uh, uh, sports injuries see an in ankle sprain see sprain means a uh, injury to a uh, few or most of the fibers of the ligament sprain means by injury to the most or few fibers of the ligament around the ankle there are lot of ligaments as we already saw the most common ligament which goes in for sprain is atfl it stands for anterior talo fibular ligament anterior talo fibular ligament and this occurs because of inversion injury this occurs because of inversion injury you know what is called as inversion and aversion very much see when you are uh, you just uh, stand like this the foot has got medial border and lateral border clear yeah? when the medial border of the foot is off the ground like this this is called as inversion when the lateral border of the foot is off the ground this is called as aversion this is called as aversion so when not there is inversion injury like this the ligament on the lateral side goes in for more stretching okay so that results in ankle sprain that results in sprain of atfl the anterior talofibular ligament sprain is most commonly seen around the ankle region and that is most because of inversion injury most because of inversion injury and mostly it is treated uh, conservatively very rarely they require uh, uh, surgeries mostly it requires uh, conservation only okay by means of immobilization period of rest the ankle sprain usually heal better and do better okay so these are the various uh, sports injuries 